By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have an alpha beta battle for you. I am playing with my beta blue flyers deck against a black and red beta deck and that's uh, piloted by Robert, friend of the channel. And I'm really looking forward to show you this match because the decks are just absolutely stunning. Both of them are and I'm just so happy that uh, I get to show you my uh, blue beta blue flyers deck. It's been a work in progress, you know, it's uh, it's really been a journey for me and I'm just so happy that it's finished. It's got Phantasmal Forces, Phantom Monsters, Wall of Airs. I'm just very excited to show you this deck in action. Now we are playing Alpha Beta Magic, simply meaning we're only playing with cards from Alpha and Beta. Now if you want to know more about the rules at the specifics, because certain cards are also restricted in this format, for example, I'm only playing with one Control Magic because it's restricted according to the AB4K rules, that's a rule set we're following today. Please check the description below if you want to know more about that. And in that same description, you can also find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there to directly go to the games because I know that some of you enjoy looking at the games first and then checking out the deck deck or just skip the deck deck altogether. Now, this is a best of five match. So, yeah, it's going to be very exciting to see who's going to be on top after those five games or maybe... It'll be 3-0 for my Blue Flyers, and we'll be done in three games. That's a possibility. Who knows? Anyway, um, let's uh, start with the deck decks. I'm actually going to start with the deck of my opponent, Robert, and his uh, red and black deck. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Robert. So it's black and red. I think black here is definitely the main color, right? There, actually, there are only five red cards in there, but they can be quite decisive, right? The Disintegrates and the Shatters. That's something that black can do, especially when you're only playing with Corset. How are you going to get rid of the artifact? Simply you splash a color like red or white. In this case, it's red. And so he's playing with three shatters main, one shatter in the sideboard. I also like the disintegrates in here because there are quite a lot of mana sources in the deck. And he's also playing with dark rituals. So X spells are better with dark ritual. Talking about those type of spells, we also see three drain lives in the deck, which I think is really good because he's playing with three, six, nine, twelve, eighteen swamps in total. And it kind of makes sense that he's playing with so many swamps because if you look at this deck, it needs to have double black. If it doesn't have, to have double black, it doesn't function, right? Because you've got Black Knight, you've got Sengir Vampire, you've got Hypnotic Spectre, the Drain Life, of course, but also the Pestilence is here on the board, three Pestilence. So you really need to have the black mana. So I understand that he's really going for it here, um, but there are a lot of mana sources. So we'll just have to wait and see how that is going to develop uh, during the game. It does look like a very strong deck. I think Terror is a really good card against me because I'm only playing with blue creatures. So Terror can target everything that I have. So that's pretty good news for uh, for Robert. I also think that the Drain Life and the Disintegrates, they look quite, quite, uh, quite strong. And I love the three Howl From Beyonds. Personally, I mean, Robert, if you're gonna kill me, I hope it's gonna be by a Howl From Beyond play. You know, because that is style points. I also love Howl From Beyond in combination with uh, Black Knight, because Black Knight, of course, has First Strike. So then if I'm blocking, the First Strike means it's going to deal damage first before it takes any other damage. So if then the creature is dead, you know, the Black Knight survives. So, for example, if you attack with the Black Knight and I block with the Pearl Unicorn, the Pearl Unicorn dies because it only has two toughness and it simply dies to the First Strike before it can deal damage back. Now, with the Howl From Beyond scenario, it gets even better because then let's say I'm he's attacking with the Black Knight and I'm going to block on my air, air Elemental. He can play a Howl From Beyond for two, making it a 4-2 for uh, First Striker. That's what I'm trying to say. And he'll kill my Air Elemental on the spot. Again, my Air Elemental is dead before it can deal any damage back. That's how First Strike works. So First Strike with Howl From Beyond is just very powerful. And Howl From Beyond is powerful... In general, I mean, maybe I'm under pressure. I got to let one creature through. I'm quite low already. He can finish me off using a Howl From Beyond, maybe with a Dark Ritual. And in general, there are quite a lot of manas, like I said, a lot of lands in this deck already. So that makes those spells better as well. So um, yeah, this is the deck of uh, my opponent, uh, Robert, today. Now let's take a look at my deck, Beta Blue Flyers. And here we see my deck, Beta Blue Flyers, named, of course, after the many Beta Flyers in here that actually is also an alpha flyer in here. Don't tell anybody, it's one of the air elementals. Uh, but I'm playing with a lot of flying creatures, right? Mahamoti Jin, three air elementals, four phantom monsters, a wall of air. I would love to have some more wall of airs, by the way. I think they're quite good, especially since only three to cast. Um, and I'm also playing with three phantasmal forces. So I, I have air domination, hopefully, or at least that's the idea of the deck. 
I think the weak uh, weakness of this deck is it's slow. You know, I mean, I have no Mox Sapphire beta. Um, I have no I have no Mox in beta anyway. I do have a Soul Ring, so I feel very fortunate with that. So I can ramp a little bit with, with the Soul Ring. But my creatures are quite costly. That's maybe why I would like to have some more Wall of Errors, because Wall of Errors is only three. So, you know, it, it's it's that one turn earlier than, you know, then maybe it can stop a Hippie. I'm really worried about the Hippie, by the way. If, if Robert can have, like, a Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre turn one, there's not a lot that I can do against that. I do have some weapons, though, in the deck, and those are the four Unsummoned. So the reason I think Unsummoned is really good in this deck is the early game, right? Unsummon one blue, and I can send back a creature an instant. I can send back a creature from my opponent. It is an instant. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah, so if he does Dark Ritual into Hippie, I'm hoping to have an Unsummon in hand so I can simply send it back, which would be fantastic, right? That would be the dream scenario. But if I don't have that Unsummon, it's going to be really tough. I am playing pretty heavy on Counter Magic, but of course for Counter Magic, I need to be already in that turn two. And if my opponent's on the play, I'm going to be, you know, quite late. It's quite slow. I don't have access to Terror, for example. I do have two um, Psionic Blasts in the deck, which I think are going to be quite good considering the Sengir Vampires. Uh, you know, and, and of course, again, those um, uh, those Hypnotic Spectres and also a Black Knight that maybe is going to put a Howl from Beyond on in response. I can play my Psionic Blast or my Unsummon. So I think actually Unsummon and Psionic Blast are quite good in this matchup. I also play with uh, three Icy Manipulators and um, one Copy Artifact. I'm also try, uh, trying out two Steel Artifacts main. I think Steel Artifact in the Alpha Beta format is quite good because a lot of people play with Icy Manipulators, Jam Day Tomes, um, the the statue is another jade statue is another card that you see quite a lot in in alpha beta I noticed so I think steel artifact in alpha beta is better than in other formats but I think in this matchup against Robert maybe I'm going to board the steel artifacts out because he's not playing with a lot of artifacts so but I think in general steel artifacts are quite strong in alpha beta um, I would also like to point out that I'm playing with one psychic venom so psychic venom is an enchant land you put that on the land if the land gets tapped the opponent gets two points of damage. So that works fantastic with, of course, my Icy Manipulator. So, I mean, if we're looking at this matchup, I think that I'm more of the control player, obviously playing blue, but also kind of having the more expensive spells, and I don't have that ramp with Dark Ritual. So I'm going to try to control the board at the start, try to survive. Then I'm going to play up my, my flying creatures, try to kind of dominate the air and control the board with my Icy Manipulators. The risk of this strategy, though, is that, you know, Robert is playing with Disintegrate, he is playing with uh, Pestilence, he is playing with Drain Life, and those cards get stronger, um, you know, if the game takes longer. So he's got, he's not a one-trick pony. His deck is not only aggressive. He can also win at mid-game, late-game. So that's something to keep in mind. So i got to think about my counter strategy here as well. Now, remember, of course, when we start the game, we don't know each other's decks. So now I've seen his list, and I know kind of a strategy, but while I'm playing the game, I don't know his list, of course. So I just have to kind of guess and think what type of deck does he have? What kind of cards does he play? Okay, this is my deck. We've looked at the deck of Robert, and that means we're ready. Let's go to the Alpha Beta Duel. Game number one of this best of five match. I'm playing against Black Rat Howl, and I think uh, Robert is on the play. He's got a beautiful play mat on the left with the Hypnotic Spectre on it. No Hypnotic Spectre, please. Okay, that's a relief. Passing the turn here to me, so I'm on Beta Blue Flyers, a mono blue deck. Starting out just with an island and a pass. There's a second black. Are we going to see a black knight here? No black knight. So that's nice. A slow start by my opponent, which is good for me, because now I have two blue open, so I have access to Power Sync, Counter Spell. I can also Spell Blast for one. I'm just passing the turn here to Robert, who's playing a mountain now. Got enough mana to hard cast if not Spectre is not doing so, passing the turn here. Maybe this is a little stare down here that he's waiting for a moment where I'm going to tap out and play out a flyer, for example. Or maybe he simply doesn't have a Black Knight or Hypnotic Spectre in hand. I mean, it's possible. Seven cards in hand, missing a land drop here. I'm surprised because he's got so many lands in his deck. The mana base in his deck seems really solid, but he is missing it here. And I got to discard a card. That's so bad. Discarding a Mahamoti Jin. Oh, man, that feels bad. And I'm playing blue. I mean, blue counter magic. I want to have a lot of, of blue lands. Okay, here we're going to see a Jade statue. Am I going to counter the Jade statue? Here I am. I'm going to play a counter spell. 
I mean, maybe my hand's just full of counter magic and, and costly flyers like air elementals and stuff like that. Drawing into card number seven here. And passing the turn again. Wow. And these missed land drops, they have to stop or else I'm really going to lose this game. And I think Robert's strategy here is the right one. Just try to play through the counter, uh, counter spells that I have. Here we see another one. I mean, in the end, I'm playing with four counter spells, two spell blasts, and two power sink. And I'm going to run out of counter spells at a certain point. Finally finding a land again, so that's good news. Four land, tapping four lands. Playing out a Phantasmal Forces, so that's a 4-1 flyer, and during my upkeep, I gotta pay one blue. So that's always the reason why I think not a lot of people play with Phantasmal Forces, because of that one blue upkeep cost, which is annoying when you're a blue player. Then again, I mean, a 4-1 flyer, you're kind of forcing your opponent to have an answer for that. So let's see what, uh, what Robert can do here. Yeah, another Sengir. I'm actually not really unhappy with the Sengir. I'm just going to attack off for him to trade, I think. Anyway, let's first uh, draw my card for turn. Hopefully I can find more lands. Six cards in hand, attacking here with my Phantasmal Forces. Look at that, he's taking the damage, makes sense. You don't really want to trade a Sengir for a Phantasmal Forces, it feels bad. But maybe at a certain point in the game he'll have to. Remember, he is playing, of course, with Drain Lives, with Disintegrates. So it would be really easy to just play a Disintegrate for one. There's an Unsummon here on the Sengir Vampire. And the question now is, is he going to play it out again? Because maybe I have a Counterspell in hand. Of course, I've already played out two Counterspells. So there are only two more in my deck. But at least I'm slowing him down a little bit. I could have done this on end step as well. He is doing something else though, tapping four. There is a Pestilence. Playing a counter spell here on the Pestilence. Yeah, so my plan was probably to counter the Sengir Vampire, but I think this Pestilence is more important to counter. Taking on my turn, paying, of course, for the uh, Phantasmal Forces again, and I am finding a lot of counter magic here in this game one. That's kind of keeping me alive here. Five cards in hand. I'm still a bit low on basic lands. I mean, look at uh, Robert's mana here. He's got six lands. I only have four. There's a Terror, though. Am I able to counter? There's a Spell Blast. So Spell Blast is really good, right? To stop instants like Terror or like Swords to Plowshares or Lightning Bolt. They're perfect for that. They're not so good at countering the bigger spells like the creatures and the enchantments. They're usually more costly. Tapping five there. We're going to see the Sengir Vampire again. Now look at his life total, right? He's already on 12. So I wonder if he's going to take four more points of damage here from the Phantasmal Forces or if he's going to accept a trade. I think he's probably going to take four more points. We'll just have to wait and see, though. Yeah, he's going to take the damage. Going to go to eight. It makes sense. Also, because, of course, my Phantasmal Forces is holding me back as well. You know, I got to invest one mana. Ooh, I'm going to tap four. That means I'm tapping out. I cannot counter next turn. Playing an Icy Manipulator. I'm playing with um, three Icy Manipulators in the deck. So I get quite a lot of Icy's. I've got three cards in hand. Robert now has four cards in hand after drawing. Now he's playing a land, so he's back to three as well. Next turn, of course, I can block the Sengir. I wonder if we're going to see a Shatter tapping three here. Are we going to see Hypnotic Spectre, perhaps? That would be quite good, because he can use the Hippie to, to then block the Phantasmal Forces. That's already a much better trade. But then again, it's gonna be, next turn is going to be really interesting. Anyway, first taking hit from the Sengir Vampire, dropping to 16. Oh, Drain Life for one. That is really good, actually, the Drain Life for one. It's going to bring him back up to nine. And he's destroyed that uh, Phantasmal Forces. I was able to protect it from the Terror and from the uh, Pestilence, but yeah, now it's really dead. He still has five open. Two cards in hand, passing the turn. Let's see what I can do. Drawing card number four, or is this card number three? Anyway, tapping five. Are we going to see an air elemental? There's an air elemental. So three cards in hand passing the turn. I mean, it's looking pretty good for me. My opponent here is on nine. I've got the air elemental. I've got the, uh, the icy manipulator I can start using. Oh, tapping six. Drain life for four. Wow. 
Here we can see the strength of drain life, right? Because and he's destroying my creature and he's going up in life, which means there's less pressure for him. This is great for uh, Robert. He's going to 13, attacking me now. I'm on 12. All of a sudden, the tables have turned. And there's just a lot of removal in the deck of Robert. I can really see it now that I'm playing against him. We've got Tedor, we've got Drain Life, we've got Pestilence. There are Disintegrates in there. He's got a lot of answers. And I'm just keep playing out my blue flyers. There's another Air Elemental playing three in total in my deck. I'm really liking this game one. It was a slow start, but once we started playing out our stuff, I mean, we're really going for it here. There's another mountain here for Robert. There's an attack for four. Look at that, taking the damage. Oh, hell from beyond. Oh, man. This is a great win here by Robert in game one. Wow, wow, wow. I, I understand my line of thought here. What I wanted to do was, oh, I even had a psionic blast in hand. I wanted just to take the damage. Then next turn, I would have the IC to tap everything down. And I just wanted to put pressure on his life total with the air elemental. Maybe use the Psy Blast to cut up four more life when he thought he was still in the, in the, in the safe zone. Oh, but then, hell from beyond. I like it, man. I love it, Robert. Very classy first game win. It's just the first game. Remember, we are playing a best of five, so we're going to shuffle up and uh, we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So I'm on the play, of course, after losing that game one. Wow. I thought I had it in the bag. I thought I did. I was feeling comfortable. That's usually where it goes wrong. Anyway, six in hand, passing the turn. Robert playing a swamp. I'm playing an island. Pass. I think we're going to see a slow start again, unless, of course, Robert wants to take a chance here with maybe a Black Knight or a Ritual into a Hippie. Island number three and a pass again. Six in hand for me. And are we going to see an Hypnotic Spectre? There's Hypnotic Spectre. Now, are we going to see a Counter Spell? If I don't have one or a Psionic Blast, it's got to be tough. Yeah, Psionic Blast here on the Hypnotic Spectre. Dropping two life, but of course, that's more than worth it. Dropping to 18 here and five cards in hand, going back up to six, playing my island for turn. Could play a Phantom Monster here or a Phantasmal Forces. Ooh, I'm gonna do something, tapping four. Yeah, Phantom Monster, love it. Three, three vanilla, well, flying, so technically not a vanilla, but for me, always these creatures that only have flying, I kind of consider them as vanilla creatures. I know technically that's not correct, but that's, that's the way I look at them. Anyway, there is a... Oh, this Phantom Monster is a perfect blocker for the Hypnotic Spectre. I love it. That is really nice. But of course, I mean, if maybe next turn Robert finds another Swamp or a Mountain, he can play a Drain Life for three on my monster, and then I also lose a card. So it's quite risky. Leaving five open here, by the way, passing the turn. I'm really annoyed now by my one unsigned island. Anyway, let's see what uh, Robert can do here, finding a mountain. So he's got enough mana, for example, to cast a Sengir Vampire. Oh, there's a terror. Oh no, I gotta counter this. Okay, counter spell, good, good. I gotta keep my phantom monster around. Another terror, do I have like spell blast? Another counter spell, okay. I think that, that this exchange isn't even that bad for Robert because he's just trading two terrors for two counter spells. It, it could be worse. I mean, I'm, I'd much rather use a Power Sync or um, a Spell Blast. That would actually be perfect here. But if you don't have it, at least I can keep my Phantom Monster around. I need to keep it around here. Three cards in hand, by the way. Robert uh, finding another Mountain. Playing out a Sengir Vampire. 4-4 four, four Flying. Now, this is a problem. And I mean, I lost my Counter Spells probably here. Yep, exactly. So I lost my Counter Spells to the Terror. So... This is rough. Can I cast an Icy? That would be quite good. Gem de Tome, not as good. I mean, it's a good card, don't get me wrong, but you want to have this card from a control position. So if, for example, I would have had a Wall of Air and a Phantom Monster, then the Gem de Tome is a lot better. At least I'm still pretty high up in my life. You're taking four points of damage, dropping to 14. And luckily for me, Robert is just passing turn here, not playing out more threats. A Pestilence will be interesting here as well. You could slowly like ping me down. Or of course a way to get rid of my Phantom Monster and keep his Hypnotic Spectre around. That would be even better. Like a Drain Life or Disintegrate. Tapping four again. There's the Phantasmal Forces. Interesting. So now I could choose to attack with the Phantom Monster. But yeah, it's probably better not to. Because then 
Robert is probably going to attack with his hippie and I have to make a choice between Phantasmal Forces, between Sengir and Hypnotic Spectre. That would be kind of odd, um, awkward, I mean. So it's better to just keep my Phantom Monster on blocking duty. And now it's difficult for Robert as well because he doesn't want to fly into my forces. I think I'm just going to attack next turn with my forces if my forces survive. Let's first see what, what uh, Robert can do here. Just playing a land and a pass, so he cannot do much. Paying one blue, of course, for the upkeep cost of the forces, a 4-1 flyer. Beautiful art. And I'm not attacking here. That surprises me. Maybe the Howl from Beyond move kind of spooked me. Drawing a... I mean, I can understand this move as well. I'm just thinking, you know, in end step, I can draw a card. So I take card advantage here over damage. I just want to keep my flyers on blocking duty and slowly kind of get more cards than my opponent, knowing that card advantage eventually will probably give me the victory. Again, I mean, small problems with the land drops in my deck. I think I probably need to go to more lands. I believe I'm playing 22 lands in the Soul Ring. Maybe I need to go to 24 lands in the Soul Ring. Drawing a card for turning again on the end step. So this is a really good scenario for me, right? We're having a standstill, but I have the book, so it's fine. I don't mind the standstill because I'm drawing twice as many cards as my opponent. And finally finding some lands, which, which only makes my deck better. Tapping three. Are we going to see a Psionic Blast here? Taking it back. A little bit in the tank here, of course. If I play out a card, for example, a Wall of Air, um, it does mean I cannot draw an extra card here with my Gem de Tome. And if I have a Wall of Air, I personally think that I should first attack with the Phantasmal Forces and see if he maybe takes a trade. I am tapping three here again. A little bit in the tank here. Yeah, so there's a Psionic Blast. And attacking here with my Phantasmal Forces, offering the trade. I think I think I should have first just attacked with the uh, Phantasmal Forces, just to see what uh, my opponent would do. Anyway, I've cleared the way, so next turn I can start attacking with Phantom Monster if Robert doesn't do anything. I mean... He hasn't been very active. It looks like he's really uh, hit a land pocket here. I mean, look at his land count. He's got 11 lands, and I only have six. And that's a difference, of course. That means that he's finding lands where I'm finding, like, probably creatures that I can put on the board to put pressure on. Attacking here. Tapping four. And I, I think here we're going to see the, um, the result of me using the book for, like, three or four turns. That card advantage, I'm really going to play that out now, probably. There's a terror on one of my monsters. How can you terrorize a monster? I mean, it's got to be really, really, really scary. Anyway, the monster's gone, but I still have one remaining, so I can attack with the other. Uh, Robert's still being on a pretty high life total, though. He's on 17, going to drop to 14 here, probably. There's not too much to worry about for Robert. He just needs to find something. Well, there, he's got to find a Shatter. He really has to take care of the book. And then, of course, he's got to find maybe another Sengir. Finding a Swamp. Now, remember, his deck's got two Disintegrates. It, it, it has Drain Life, so he can also just kind of try to just get as many lands out there as, and, as, as he can and hopefully find the right moment to cast a Drain Life. Well, hopefully for him, of course. I'm not hoping for that scenario. Drawing another card here on end step. And this is exactly what I want to do, right? I'm drawing twice as many cards. I got pressure on the board. And he's got nothing. Only two cards in hand. I've got seven in hand. Eight even now. Attacking, putting it over on 11. Probably going to play another flyer. There we go. Phantasmal Forces, meaning I can hit him for six next turn. Seven in hand pass. Yeah, this is really tough for Robert now. I mean, if he can find a Disintegrate... Oh, I like this, an Earthbind. That is really cool. Earthbind on Phantasmal Forces. Can I counter it, though? Should I counter it? Because maybe I should just take the damage. There's an Unsummon. Okay. Going to save it with an Unsummon. There's an Hypnotic Spectre. I do like this line of play by Robert. So he's first trying to lure out a possible counter spell, and then he's playing uh, the Hypnotic Spectre. It looks like I'm going to 
allow it. I don't have enough mana. I mean, Power Sync is quite worthless. I have another Unsummon. Okay, on end step, I'm playing the Unsummon, of course, so he cannot replay it. It's it's something. It means he's going to take three extra points of damage, and he's got to recast it again. Playing a Soul Ring here. Attacking for three. So, I mean, Robert is now going into the, the single digits. Going to drop to eight. Look at that. A copy artifact on the Soul Ring. I really just want to have enough mana to keep drawing cards and counter at the same time. Keeping four open. Does that mean I have a Spell Blast in hand? Am I signaling a Spell Blast here to my opponent? It's going to recast Hypnotic Spectre. I think if I'm going to counter this, I should probably first draw a card. I am going to play a Spell Blast here. Okay, so playing the Spell Blast. Although, it's not true what I'm saying, because you want to keep mana open to counter another spell. Remember, uh, Robert now has how many lands? It's a lot. Six, nine, 13 lands. So if he can find a Disintegrate and play it without me being able to counter it, he can win the game with just one Disintegrate. So it's looking super good for me. I'm, I'm very dominant, but remember game one, I also lost because of one Howl from Beyond. If he can time a Disintegrate you know, right, he can still win this game. And remember, I think I already played out two counter spells this game and I'm only playing four in total. Tapping six, are we going to see Mahamoti Jin, Papa Moti hitting the board? That always feels good. There's a Pestilence though, whoa. Oh, the problem here, of course, for Robert is his life total. He's too low, he's on five, he's on five. So he's going to die, it doesn't matter what he does. The Pestilence is simply coming too late, he's too low. He can Pestilence for six, but remember, Pestilence deals damage to everybody. And I'm actually not countered for a moment. I thought I was going to counter, but there's no reason for me to counter. He is going to use the Pestilence here to kill the Phantom Monster. I wonder if he has an answer here for the Mahamoti. If he does, it means he, he can live. He can survive another turn. There's an island attacking for five here. That's it. Okay, so game uh, number two is going to me here. So that means we have a nice 1-1. One, one. We're going to shuffle up again and uh, start with game uh, number three. Game number three. Here we go. So it's 1-1 one, one in my opponent here. Robert is on the play. Looks like he's taking a mulligan. Yep. He's got to pick a card. You put it on the bottom. So starting with six in his opener. I've kept my first seven, and there's a pass. A swamp, I should say, and then a pass. I'm probably just going to play out a basic island and pass, right? The only card that maybe I would want to play out is Soul Ring, and i got to be super lucky to find that at turn one. Second black and just a pass. So Robert hasn't found any of his black knights, I notice. Tapping three here. There's an Hypnotic Spectre. That's pretty good. Can I counter it? Again, that question. Yep, I can. And this time with the power sync. So that's better for me than just using a hard counter spell. There's an island. Tapping three here. What can I do with three? Is there? Ah, there's a wall of air. Okay. So I could have... But I think it's better to counter not expect her because Robert also has terror in his, in his deck. So this just this feels better. The Wall of Air can also backfire against me, by the way, because he's playing with Pestilence, so. There's a Terror, because okay, so he's going to terrorize my Wall of Air. That's interesting. I'm actually not too sad about this. I mean, I get it. Wall of Air, is, it's a great blocker for me, but, I mean, he's used to Terror on it. That's nice. Island number four in the pass. Looks like Robert missed a land drop earlier, by the way. But now he's got four lands. Yeah, because he was on the play, so he should be on five. And with five, of course, he has access to Sengir. There are still some cards in the deck of Robert that we haven't seen. Like Black Knight, uh, we haven't seen. Nightmare. He's playing a one-off Nightmare. We haven't seen Shatter. We haven't seen... Did we see Disintegrate? I don't think we have. 
Anyway, Robert uh, playing land number five. And of course, now he's probably thinking, do I want to play out? Exactly. Do you want to play out the Sengir? Is it a good move? Because he's probably expecting counter magic. Exactly. There's a counter spell. I mean, I am finding a lot of counter magic, I have to admit. And yes, of course, I do play with eight counter spells, but still. I mean, there, have been, there, there are also moments when the blue player doesn't have it. Trust me, there are a lot of moments in the game where I don't have it. Anyway, tapping four now, playing a Phantom Monster, 3-3 three, three Flyer. So that means I can put some pressure on the life total of Robert if this uh, survives. If he can find one more Swamp, he can also drain life the monster. Ooh, there's a Disintegrate. So we've seen a Disintegrate then. Again, I'm not too unhappy about this. It's something that Robert has to do, I get it, but he's using his Disintegrate for it, and I'm, I'm a little bit scared of the Disintegrate because later in the game, these games tend to take quite long, right? We, we, we stack up a lot of lands, and he can win it with one big Disintegrate, so I'm kind of happy to see one of his Disintegrates uh, find their way into the graveyard. Playing an island, passing the turn, wow. So both of us just playing lands, basically. It looks like I'm going to do something now. Tapping five, and I can keep two open to counter, which is not unimportant. Playing an air elemental here, 4-4 four, four flyer. I hope that this flyer can stick. I mean, Robert already used a terror and a disintegrate. There's another disintegrate. Okay. There's a counter spell, though. Protecting my air elemental. This is bad news for Robert because he's got to tap a lot. So he can only do this one thing probably. So he's lost a whole turn on basically nothing. Because his card got countered. And now I've got that air elemental. Can it bring me the victory? I mean, I know it's still far away. Robert, of course, being on 20. But it can go quite fast with an air elemental. Attacking or putting him on 16. Three cards in hand passing to turn. And Robert going to draw into card number three. Again, finding a lot of lands. Pestilence would be, would be good for him as well here. Because he can play out the Pestilence and use it the same turn to get rid of the air elemental. Oof. Also finding an icy manipulator here. I'm going to use it, I guess, here. There's a Shatter, though. Shatter on my end step. Okay, so I talked about the cards we haven't seen. Shatter was one of them. So we've seen Shatter. We've seen Disintegrate. I'm also hoping to still see the Nightmare in this matchup, even though I'm kind of scared for that creature as well. But it's just such a beautiful card. So seeing a beta Nightmare would be a pleasure. Anyway, attacking here for four. Going to put Robert on eight. Yeah, this Air Elemental is really... Doing a lot of work for me. Putting a Psychic Venom, I guess, on one of his swamps. So my reasoning here to put it on a swamp is that if he's got a Drain Life, he probably wants to use all his swamps and at least he takes some damage from it. And of course, that Psychic Venom would have been really good if I, if I still would have had that Icy Manipulator. That would have been glori glorious for me. But it's not meant to be. Let's see if Robert can do anything here against the Air Elemental. No, he cannot, at least not at this time. Passing the turn again. Four cards in hand. I can swing in for four, put him on four. And then if I have a Psy Blast, this game could be over right now. No, I don't. I'm just passing the turn here. And we're actually both drawing a lot of lands this turn. Or this game, I should say. Game number three. Best of three. Uh, best of five. It's a 1-1. One, one. And it's going to be a 1-2, winning it here. Actually, yeah, I should say 2-1, right? It's my channel. It's like I'm always playing for the home side. Anyway, um, winning here game number three, but it's not over yet. Remember, we are doing a best of five. So stick around for game number four. Game number four, here we go. So if I win this, I've won the best of five. Putting a card here on the bottom of my deck, by the way. So starting with the card less, my first mulligan in this match, not too bad. So six in total. And my opponent here, of course, being on the play, which makes a difference. I mean, 
I think if I'm on the draw, my deck is really a lot worse because of that counter magic and because I'm so slow, right? I just want to get at two blue mana as fast as I can so I can start countering. And being on the draw means it's going to take one turn longer. Robert also uh, took a mulligan, by the way, so he's also starting on six. Let's see if he can, you know, have a Dark Ritual into a Hypnotic Spectre or have a turn two Black Knight. I think those plays are really strong, especially now that he is... Oh, Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre. Yeah, this is really good, especially now that he's on the play. That's what I wanted to say. Do I have an Unsummon here? If I don't have an Unsummon, I'm really in trouble finding an island. Unsummon? I mean, I can wait with Unsummon till the end, which is probably better to do. Wait for his combat. No, I don't have an unsummon. Oh, man. This is going to be one of those hippie games. Going to take two points of damage. And he's going to roll for it. Cart number six is gone. Air elemental is gone. I mean, that's not too bad. You're always hoping that he doesn't pick out, like, maybe if I have a wall of air in hand, not my wall of air, not my lance, not my psionic blast. So this could be worse. Our elemental is not the end of the world, but I mean, it is, of course, a great start for uh, Robert here. Another attack here. Taking number three, going to take damage. Go to 16, losing a phantom monster. Yeah, that's kind of annoying, right? Because phantom monster, only four mana, can almost cast it. Another island. Oh, I got to play something. Hopefully, I got a psionic blast now to kill the Hypnotic Spectre. And even then, I mean, it's already done its job. No, it looks like I don't. Oh no, oh no, this is really bad. Card number four. Losing the power sink. Yeah, I mean, counter magic. This is just great for Robert. He can first attack and then he can play something out. This is not even the worst for me, that, uh, that Pestilence. Another Hypnotic Spectre would have been way worse. Finding land number four. Hopefully I can play out a Phantasmal Forces or a Phantom Monster. Wall of Air clone, maybe? Remember, I'm also playing one clone in the deck. Clone the hippie. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. It looks like I've got nothing to go for. Tapping for maybe... Yeah, Icy Manipulator. I was afraid of that because it took me so long to kind of think. So my reasoning here is at least he cannot force me to discard the Icy. And then next turn, I can start tapping down the hippie. And I, I still will have one card saved. Oh, this is so bad. I'm going to lose this card. Let's see what it is. Counterspell, yeah. It's really it's really nice to see there's a Sanger Vampire. Would have been great if I could have countered it with the mana and stuff. I need, I think what kind of can help me here is a Control Magic. Do I have, ooh, Brain Geyser. For a moment there, I thought I had a Control Magic. So drawing two cards back, that's something at least. And I can tap down the Hypnotic Spectre. I mean, I am on 12. I think we're kind of... I'm asking now, did I take the damage from the Hypnotic Spectre? I don't think I did, so I'm going to 10. The problem with Hypnotic Spectre is that I am usually, as an opponent, so focused on the fact that I'm going to lose a card that I forget to take the damage. So I'm really happy to see that I'm here reminding myself of taking that damage. So that's also for the Hypnotic Spectre players out there to really keep an eye on that. Because sometimes you over-focus on the discard part of the card, which is, of course, super powerful. But don't forget the two points of damage, of course. They also count to matter. There's another sing here for Robert, by the way. I am so dead. I am so dead. I think Control Magic, that's the card I need right now. Or, or Phantasmal Forces or... Okay, Ma Moti Jin. Ma Moti Jin. I'm still dead because I got to tap out. No, this doesn't help. <laughs> It's really cool to play a Mahmoti, though. Okay, Robert, take the... I'm tapped out. Kill me now. Yeah, there he goes. He's attacking with the full team. I'm probably just going to kill a Sengir because I can. But I'm going to end up on zero. This was really a ritual turn one hippie win. And here you can see the strength of that in the deck of Robert. And, and how tough it is for me to deal with that. I mean, my deck is it really isn't built against a turn one hippie. You know, like I said in the deck deck, I do have the unsummons. But if I don't have them... This is what happens. Anyway, it does mean we have a 2-2. So we're going to go to game number five. Game number five. Here we go. This is the decider. At least I'm on the play. That's a big advantage for me. Well, big advantage, but it's good for me. Let me put it that way. Anyway, are we going to see a Dark Ritual from Robert? No. So that's good. Two blue open. I kind of feel safe now. 
Pass the turn. Ooh, are we going to see a Black Knight? For the first time, we see a Black Knight, ladies and gentlemen. It's actually a really good card against me. No power sync, no counter spell. Taking it as it is. Playing Island number three, passing the turn. So Norbert can put some pressure on me here. I mean, Black Knight's a good card. I mean, it's, it's early pressure. Gonna go to 18 and a pass. Robert missing a land drop here. That is bad news for him, especially considering his mana base. It is surprising to see. This could be devastating for him. Let's see what I can do here. Ooh, I'm also missing a land drop passing the turn. So we're both missed a land drop. He's finding a swamp from the top of his deck, attacking me, putting me on 16. End of turn, I'm playing a Psionic Blast here on the night. And the reason I'm doing it at the end of turn is because I want to keep my counter magic open for in case that he, for example, plays out a Hypnotic Spectre. I need to be able to counter that because that would be far worse than just taking some extra damage from a Black Knight. And again, I'm missing a land drop, but Robert also missing a land drop. This is exciting now. We're both like trying to find... Ooh, a Timmy here coming from the sideboard. We're both trying to find a land from the top of our decks. That, that was what I wanted to say. But there's a Prodigal Sorcerer coming in from the sideboard. But there's a Drain Life for one. So I think I boarded in the Tims because they could be quite useful against the two Toughness creatures if it can get two Tims in. You know, I can kill the uh, the Hippies. And also from a control position, if I can have Ices on the board and a wall of, uh, wall of Air, the Tims can be quite good here. Uh, playing a uh, Icy Manipulator, which could be quite strong because Robert has some trouble with lands. Finding land number four here, by the way. There's an Hypnotic Spectre. Ooh. Lucky for me, I got the Icy Manipulator. Now remember, he is playing with Shatters, but he needs red mana to play his Shatters. So four islands here. One of the things I could do, because most of my flyers are four, right? Phantom Monster, Phantasmal Forces. I could play out one of those, but it would be super risky. Because then if Robert has a terror, he can terrorize my creature. Then attack me with the Hypnotic Spectre. It's going to cost me a card. So I think it's a good de decision here to do nothing. There's a Shatter, by the way. And there's a Spell Blast on the Shatter. Okay, this is great. Keeping my Icy alive. And of course, tapping down his Hypnotic Spectre so he cannot attack me with it. And then taking on my turn. Those, that Spell Blast was really important. Kind of saving that Icy Manipulator there. Five cards now. So now this is a good moment for me where I could play, for example, a Phantom Monster for four. Keep an Island open to tap down the Hypnotic Spectre. Again, it does mean I cannot counter, but you know... I got to do something, I guess, here. Okay, ooh, control magic. Only one control magic in my deck because remember, it is restricted in AB4K. For more information about the rules, please check the, uh, the link in the description below. And now I got his Hypnotic Spectre. And of course, in his upkeep, I'm tapping down his mountain so that he cannot play out, for example, a Disintegrate. There's a Drain Life, yeah. And this is, of course really tough for Robert, right? Because he doesn't play with white, so he has no access to Disenchant, so it's usually a two for one for him. Although, maybe he's playing with Red Elemental Blast in the sideboard? I don't think he is, but Red Elemental Blast would be a really great card, of course, against my deck, but also against Control Magic. Anyway, passing the turn here, finding another flyer, Phantasmal Forces. Passing the turn, probably gonna tap down that mountain again. And the forces, they hit hard. They got four power, you know. They're easy to kill, only one toughness, but they hit hard. If he doesn't have an answer for this, tapping four, what are we going to see here? There is a Pestilence. Actually quite good. The problem for Robert here is that he's missing... He is missing that one swamp. If he would have had that one swamp extra, he could have killed it on, on site as well. Now he's got to take four points of damage first, so he's going to... Drop down to, he got some life, of course, from the uh, from the drain life earlier. So it only takes a damage here, basically. He's going to drop to 19. And I'm going to play a, a Brain Geyser just for two. Because I had to use one of the blue mana to, uh, to tap for the Phantasmal Forces. And it means I cannot use my Icy Manipulator this turn. 
And now I'm curious. I mean, the the perfect scenario for Robert here would be to ping for one and then play out a creature. So he's going to keep his pestilence around. Look, it looks like he's going to do that. Oh, there's a singular vampire. And then he's going to kill the forces. This is great for Robert. This is really, really, really good for him. We're both taking also a damage, by the way, from the pestilence. But this is really good. Remember, Pestilence destroys itself when there are no creatures in the game. So this is really good for Robert. Let's see what I can do. If I can find, for example, an Unsummon here, that would be quite good. I could play Unsummon on this thing here, that way kill the Pestilence. I mean, I am playing four Unsummons, I haven't played a single one. Yep, there we can find the unsummon. This is great. This is such a cool way to get rid of the pestilence here on the side of Robert. So Robert losing the pestilence. Oh, unsummon, such a nice little handy card. Tapping down one of his lands, of course, in his upkeep, because why not? But now we can simply, of course, recast the Sengir, but I've got blue mana open, so maybe I can counter. Let's see what's going to happen here. Playing out the Sengir Vampire, there is a power sink. I'm really liking the unsummons here. They've really helped me so much. Passing the turn, untapping everything again. And now it's looking really good for me because I'm, I'm slightly ahead with cards. I am on a lower life total though, but I'm feeling good. Hopefully I can put some pressure on the board here. Tapping two blue. Okay, this is good. Psychic Venom. This is quite nice because now with the Icy, I can tap the Psychic, deal two damage a turn. So Robert is going to drop it to 16 and yeah, it's difficult for Robert again. Of course, I mean, this is going to take a long time. He's not dead next turn, but it is a problem for him and he's, he's got to deal with it again. Tapping four here, there is his Icy Manipulator. That's actually quite good. So we're going to have an Icy battle. I believe this Icy is coming from the sideboard, if I'm not mistaken. And he's going to tap my Icy. There's nothing for me to tap. So this is quite good for Robert. Of course, next turn I can start tapping down the Venom again, but at least for one turn he stopped the bleeding and an Icy, of course, is a very good card. I do play with control Mag uh, with Steel Artifacts, but I think I boarded those out because I hardly saw any Artifacts. There's an Air Elemental on my side of the board. That's really good. There's a Terror, though, taking care of the Air Elemental. I mean, this game five is just... Problem answer, threat answer, you know, we're, we're both doing our best here and keeping each other in check. At least I can now deal some damage again with the Icy Psychic Venom combo. Six islands for me. Also six cards in hand and five cards in hand for Robert. There's a phantom monster hitting the board. Five cards in hand. And now it's going to be interesting, like, do I want to... Use that blue mana. There is a terror on the phantom monster. Am I going to save it here, baby, with counter magic? If I do, I don't have enough mana to also... Oh, I'm going to unsummon it. This is really an unsummon game for me. And Robert here going to use my IC, forcing me to use the IC now. I think that's a good decision. Makes sense. But it's also not too bad for me because I'm still able to deal two points of damage. The nice thing for Robert here is that I'm completely tapped out. So, I mean, if he's got that Nightmare, we haven't seen the Nightmare yet in this best of five. He can use it now. No, he's just passing the turn. Four cards in hand and an Icy Manipulator. I'm recasting my Phantom Monster here. Does he have an answer for it? Or maybe he doesn't? And of course, I'm going to pass the turn. He yeah, he's going to tap the Icy again in response. I'm going to tap the land with the Psychic Venom on it. Going to drop to 12. I mean, the nice thing for Robert here is that every single time uh, when he's tapping the Icy, he's kind of forcing me to make a difficult decision. Keep two blue open with a possible counter spell or not at all. Unfortunately for Robert, he cannot take advantage of it. Tapping here my Phantom Monster in my upkeep. Because there have been a few moments where I was completely tapped out and, ooh, playing an air elemental now, gonna, I guess, tap out again. You know, where I was completely tapped out and I couldn't counter, but the robot simply couldn't find another threat. 
I'm on 13, Robert on 12. I've got that IC. I can tap his IC. There's a terror though. So that's going to take care of the air elemental. But I can tap his IC, then attack for three, put him on nine. Exactly. So end step, I'm going to use the IC manipulator to tap his IC. I mean, because that's one damage more, I could also tap down the Psychic Venom Land, but that means he takes two damage instead of three, because then he's probably going to tap down my, uh, my Phantom Monster. So I think this is a better decision, and let's see if I can put some more pressure on. I mean, I've lost a lot of creatures this game, by the way. I've seen a lot of terrors and all sorts of other stuff. Looks like I'm going to pass a turn here six, all my mana open. Let's see what he's going to do. Tapping three, finding an Hypnotic Spectre. I probably have Counter Magic here. Looking at my hand. It looks like I don't. Going to tap the Icy here. And I'm going to take my turn. Playing an island, I wonder, maybe I've got a Psionic Blast in hand, that could be an option, or maybe I just want to use my Icy to tap down the, uh, the Hippie next turn. And he is blocking it, look at that, is he going to play a Howl from Beyond for one? There's a Howl from Beyond for one, if I can counter the Howl, I mean this is Risky by Robert, if I can counter it, I can kill the Hippie here. If not, it's a trade, which is not too bad, it's still a two for one. So I'm taking the trade here. Tapping four. What am I going to do? Another Icy. Yeah, this is really bad for Robert because now I can end tap the Psychic Venom Land and tap his Icy. That is pretty disastrous here for Robert. He's going to untap here, draw for turn. I should tap the Mountain now, actually. I'm not doing it. I think this is a mistake. I think I should tap, but perhaps I got a Spell Blast in hand and I want to keep it open for a possible Shatter, but... Looks like I'm tapping the land now. And tapping the IC, of course, with my other IC. So he's on seven. I've got eight lands. There's another air elemental. This is air elemental number three. There are three in total in the deck. This is number three. Two of them got terrorized. So hopefully this one sticks around. It's looking really bad for Robert here. Yep, using both of my ice, he's going to deal two points of damage, put him on five. Right, yeah, I'm going to attack him with air elemental, probably going to put him on one. And then next turn, I got the victory. Oh, there's a Cyblast, it's already over. Winning here, air elemental and Cyblast. It just seems that my deck is too much... Going for it. Look at the hand of Robert. Very unlucky there because he had two Dark Rituals and a Hell from Beyond. So if he could have just gotten one creature through with all that potential damage, he could have won the game out of nowhere. We saw him doing that in game number one. I want to thank you, Robert, for these matches. It's been great fun. Really, really nice to just play a best of five instead of a best of three. Uh, we both had the time to do it. So it was just a really cool match to play. I love seeing your deck. It's a beautiful, beautiful deck. And uh, we actually talked a little bit about it afterwards, like what could we do in both of our decks to further improve it. And I think a mana base is still something that, that you're looking at how to further, uh, further improve that have the right balance. But sometimes you're also just unlucky that you find no lands or only lands in certain games. It happens. And also for my deck, I think I do need to add one or two more islands. So it's been a very interesting match. Thank you, Robert, for this and for showing your skills here on the channel. And also thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you go, please take a moment to like, share and comment on this video. All these things are, through, uh, are free and uh, they really help the channel move forward. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider becoming a subscriber. Hit that button and ring that bell. Thank you for doing that. And if you're already a sub, thank you so much for supporting Timmy Talks. And before you go, please consider supporting me financially as well uh, and help me continue making these videos. So check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks to find out how you can support the channel financially. And it already starts with one 
dollar a month so it's not a lot but it really helps me and the cool thing is you are getting a few perks when you join the patreon program your name will be mentioned in the end scroll for example and you can join the timmy talks online tournaments these are just a few perks when you join the patreon program so please check out patreon.com slash timmy talks and for now thank you very much for watching and let's go to the end scroll what shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het is fikkertjes, somba kazink!